What's going on, y'all? Derek Jackson here, man. Uh, I know I've been promising y'all another Q&A video. Supposed to do it whenever we hit a million on Facebook or 100,000 on YouTube. Well, we did both of those like a couple of weeks ago and just not being able to get to it, but, you know, better late than never, right? <laughs> so, I got my cup of wine. I don't know if that's manly or not, but it's in my reading a sexy glass. Um, and I got y'all questions in front of me from Instagram and Facebook, so... We about to go through it. Let's see what happens. First, let me get a little sip. I had way more earlier. But that's okay. All right. Jay from Facebook. Actually, my top comment on Facebook from my brother. Asked me, uh, do you believe women can be so damaged they don't know how to deal with a good thing? Well, Jay, uh, yeah. Um, but they're not lost causes. Yes, though, like we're human. So, you know, after a breakup, after a tough breakup, you get invested and wrapped up in somebody, you're going to be fucked up. You know what I mean? You're going to be hurt naturally. But if a woman can acknowledge that she's fucked up and be willing to take the corrective measures in order to not be fucked up anymore, then you good. I would just say, like, if she's not willing to acknowledge that and not willing to do something to actually help herself heal, really, she should have already taken time to heal. But if she's not willing to take corrective measures then i would say like man go ahead and cut bait you know what i mean you're human too even as a man you got feelings you got a heart you can't submit yourself to somebody who's broken because they're only going to try and break you you know what i mean even if it's unintentional i'll try to that was a relationship one i'm gonna try to get to some personal ones man or at least keep the relation ones uh, relationship ones kind of quick um shan ask why are some men's moms Jealous of their girlfriend to the point they make up horrible lies about the woman. Is it because they have no teeth, a fucked up shape, and their husband don't want them? I need hints. <laughs> uh, don't underestimate the power of jealousy. And I mean that like the worst way possible. Jealousy is a powerful emotion. Some people get killed over that. Pretty girls get beat up in high school. And girls in the hood get their faces cut up. Like, jealousy is for real. So, understand, like... It may be just something like she's just telling lies now. Your, your boyfriend's uh, mom is telling lies now, but it can get worse. And what I've seen from a lot of people, mothers in particular, they get so invested in being their son's number one lady that they'll do whatever to protect it even as a grown man. But if he's really a grown man, then he's going to step in. He's going to draw that line. So even though she may have fucked up teeth and a messed up shape... <laughs> And her husband don't want to, I would say, like, for the moment, remain respectful. Uh, because you're going to want that respect to return whenever it's time for him to have to talk with his mom. That's funny, though. <laughs> All right. Um, Nefertiti, some other stuff, asked, this may be out of your league, but BDSM is life. And, whoop, yep, 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 that's out of my league. So we're going to go on to the next one. We're going to do our Facebook, then we're going to do Instagram. Jasmine. Thorpe asks, why do guys swear they want a good woman and are tired of these hoes, but will have a good woman staring them in the face and will still try to treat her like these hoes? Pay attention to how he treats. That's what he's saying. He's not swearing shit with his mouth. He's swearing what he's saying. All right. Personal one. Personal ones. Uh, okay. Lorraine Virgilito says, uh, Derek, do you find it harder now to date since now you're semi-famous is it hard for you to trust the process to see if that person is real with you um ask that again lorraine yeah i mean i've always been very cautious about who i who i entertain that's whether we're talking relationships or we're talking friendships but now you know because of the space i'm in not even being famous or not because of the space i'm in like it's i would be legit famous if there was something negative to say about me you did what I'm saying? So that's an incentive. I'm a walking incentive for people, you know. So, one, I also know that, you know, a lot of women come to me. They're not really trying to get to know me anyway. They're really just curious. They're just curious what it's like, the, you know, versus the image online in real life. And, of course, being a human, there are things of me I don't put online. You know what I mean? I can't sit here tell people to be encouraged every single day or whatever and also take you through some of the times where I'm discouraged myself. You know, I fight those battles uh, privately and alone 
um, as opposed to running the chance of discouraging somebody, but that may give somebody the wrong impression of me. So <clears throat> a lot of people want to challenge that or try to find, they're just curious about it. So it's, sometimes it's like disingenuous, but yeah, um, not to get too damn deep, I'll start ranting, man. But yeah, I am, I am slower to trust people now. Um, Jessica asks, would you please take out the F word your, of your videos? They're so awesome. Uh, but that one word makes it tough for me to share. Um, fuck nope. Uh, let's see. TJ asks, how do you know when you are doing too much for someone? Whenever they're not giving you the same effort in return. Not talking in terms of tangibles, but you know what 100% effort looks like because that's what you're given. You're not getting that consistently and they're not willing to do anything about it. Let them go. I'll do one or two more from Facebook. Barbara asks, how do I end a fuck boy's life? <laughs> oh no, baby. What is you doing? <laughs> Don't do that, man. Look, any any sort of revenge on a fuck boy, just, just car let karma have it. Karma is such a thing of beauty. And at one point in time, I really questioned karma because I saw a lot of bad things happening to good people and good things happening to bad people. But you can't ignore the power of planting seeds. And if he's planted fuckboy seeds, best believe he's going to reap his harvest in due time. You focus on you. You keep working at whatever you was working at. You keep progressing in life and let time do what it do. All right. Uh, Misa Peasy asks, uh, you a little bitch. You sucking up to women for money makes me sick. Hmm. Well, it's not really a question, um, but I hope you do get to feeling better. There's been a bug going around. Apparently, a lot of people are here sick. <laughs> All right. One more. Claudia asks, was there a turning point or event in your life which made you more compassionate and shaped you into the man you are today? Yeah, I talk about this in my, in my seminars, man. Um, me and my mom had a conversation and in, in, at 19 years old. And in that conversation, she told me that, you know, she was disappointed in me because she thought I was going to be different. And she was speaking in terms of relationships. So um, that hurt just because my mom has always been proud of me, you know, with everything I've done. She's with my ass, but she's always been proud of me. So that was really like tough for me to deal with and and. I go into the story in person. I'm not going to go into it here, but you know, as far as the men in, in my life or the men in like my family, you know, my elders, uh, why it was so important for me to be different, to actually be different. You know, I began at that point challenging everything I'd ever accepted as truth when it came to relationships, how to deal with women. And, you know, it's been a process. You know, I'm still in that process, but that was the turning point where I started separating myself from everybody else. My peers, this generation and all like media, society, like I don't have to think like them. You feel what I'm saying? I don't have to follow anybody else. I can think independently. And whenever I started doing that, I realized that a lot of the things that we've accepted as a norm is actually bullshit. So. All right. Instagrammers. Um, Ebony underscore Ning. Ask, do you believe God will tell a man to propose to a woman who is already engaged? <laughs> is, this, is this what these church needs pulling out? It's like, <laughs> hey, uh, look here, sister, uh, Ebony underscore N-I-N-G. God sent a message to me during today's sermon, and he told me that the one for your man is also the one for me. So will you take this ring and be my wife? <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, come on. I no. All right, no. That's that's my answer. Uh, the B L K R D. The blacker the berry. She spelled it different. On Instagram, also ask, have you ever lost a good girl? And if so, why didn't you get her back? Um, I would say I don't know if I, I could say I lost her because I don't feel like a, you know I'm without anything. If I've ever lost a good girl, I've never lost the right one. So that's what's most important to me. Because all good people ain't for each other. You know what I mean? Like, I've definitely come across... I'm not one of those people that's going to say, like, every girl I've ever dealt with wasn't shit. You know? And you'll hear, you'll hear some dudes say that. You'll hear some girls say that about dudes. But 
all good people ain't meant for each other. So, you know, we parted ways. I'm amicable with anybody I've ever dealt with. You know, I could pretty much hit them up and talk to them. We go on good terms. Except for my ex-girlfriend who ran through the whole football team. Shout out to Janae. But everybody else, like, you know, it's cool. So, yeah, I've dealt with good girls that didn't work out. And they've gone on to be successful in their careers and be good wives and mothers and all of that. And I wish them the best. So, uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, YB Vic on Instagram also asks, You are always so encouraging and uplifting in your attitude, energy, and message which I appreciate. Do you ever feel or have previously felt discouraged or disillusioned about relationships and dating? Yeah. If you read my poetry book, then you know like all the cycles and shit I've gone through. Like I've been on the giving end and the receiving end of heartbreak. Um, and with that, you know, if that's the only thing that you see, you start to think that's the only thing that's even existing. But, you know, my book, I still want it. And my other book, uh, I still deserve it. You know, these are affirmations I've always... Like internalize, like I will not give up. I will not let this fucked up dating scene. I will let, not let my own past discourage or you know take from me the values of being in a relationship, having a family, uh, building a legacy, you know, and, and raising little ones that look just like me. So, hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see another one. I am Curly Cubana. Says, what is the best way to begin? your entrepreneur journey how did you start just find out where you add value to people just this just, just find out where you add value to people and i know it's cliche but find something that you love i say this like i know it's cliche like oh what if you love what, what you love ain't paying the bills like i've been in that situation too and in that time i had like a day job and i had what i love to do i love to write i love to, to put out messages that edify people it wasn't really paying much when I started this shit in 2012. Um, but if you just get money, you're going to feel so empty. It's not even going to be enjoyable. Not only that, you won't be able to even get to the money because you'll burn out before then. You can't fake this shit but for so long. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't, you can't do something that you really don't care about day in and day out without a payout, you know, but for so long. So you'll burn out before you actually put in enough work to get money. So find something that you love and that you would do for free um, and make sure that it adds value to people because when you add value to people, they'll they'll always return to love. That's how I'm here today. They'll always return to love. So, and focus on you. Don't focus on trying to do nobody else. Don't focus on hating on nobody else. Focus on you no matter what. It always works. All right. S smoke. Smokey Hantis says, uh, some pet peeves in the bedroom. Um, <laughs> uh, talking too much. I don't like talkers. Not like during the act. I'm talking about like in between. We switching positions or whatever. Like a whole lot of fucking talking and conversing. This ain't the time. You know, we could talk and walk at the same time. Make sure you can walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. However that saying go. But I'm not in, I'm not in for like, an intermission and talking like that really annoys me. Laziness is also another one. I'm cool with selfishness though. I'm cool with selfishness because I'm a giver, so it's all good if you're selfish. But laziness and talking too damn much. Uh, Nicole Ware. Hello, Derek. You're so insightful as a man. Why do you think your perception of relationships is so much different than all other black men? Um, well, and I don't think it's that much different than. All of the black men, maybe, maybe most, maybe. And I'm saying maybe because shit, I was inspired to do this by a black man, you know, and there are other black men I look up to, man, or, you know, at least I admire that I consider in my circle. Like, you know, you have a uh, Stefan Speaks relationships on Facebook. Some of y'all may know him as Stefan Labossier. Yeah. Paul Camp Brunson. Yeah. Uh, E.T. the hip hop preacher, Eric Thomas, which is the guy who inspired me to do this in the first place. Um, so there are, there are brothers out here, man, that, that are speaking this real shit and that have the right mindset. Ain't none of us perfect. You feel me? We Our values may be in the right place, but ain't none of us perfect. Um, but, yeah, I, I think maybe it's a little different because I'm able to put my ego aside. You know, I don't think, like, I should be able to get away with everything. Even if I'm not perfect, I should be able to face consequences for those imperfections and I need to address those imperfections before I, you know, get in a relationship. 
<clears throat> so when you take ego out of things, like it reveals a lot as a man. So, you know, if I'm different from most black men or most men in general, I don't want to just put black men down. Um, that would, would that's, that's what I would have credited to. 27 uh, Nove asks, why are men threatened by a friendship with a male co-worker? Let's see where we at on time. Are we okay? Um, shit, I'll be threatened by that shit too. Fuck that. You going, you going to work every day to basically go build an empire with this dude, right? And no other qualification for him being in your circle that much except for he's a co-worker, right? And people have sex in offices all the fucking time. So that ain't no real qualification. Like in real life, a qualification for being with a dude that much time without me being there or without the dude being there is that, you know, he he's gay, like definitely gay. Um, he don't flip flop. He's not bisexual. He's gay. Or, you know, in other, some other way he's proven himself. Y'all been friends since y'all was little kids and he's basically a brother to you, like a real, like a brother. Y'all blood related. But coworker. Shit, y'all just work at the same place. He's still just another dude. And on top of that, y'all friends? Like, I get being cordial. You got to go to work with other dudes. That's fine. But if you talk about being friends, you saying like on a personal level, y'all connect. Y'all can talk about personal shit. And, and maybe even have drinks after work. So, hell yeah, dude, it'll be threatened. That's a whole lot of foundation building. What they say, like how you build a foundation, a friendship, right? You spend time talking, right? You know, you may work on things together or whatever. Like you do all the shit that you're, you're doing with that male coworker. I mean, clearly y'all goals, y'all y'all career goals are aligned. Y'all have a lot of common because y'all work at the same place. And then y'all friends. And this dude might be handsome and everything else. And man, hell yeah, I'm threatened by that. Why are men threatened? That's why. Y'all building an empire together every day, man. Fuck that. <laughs> to an extent, if y'all just cool at work, that's one thing. But if y'all really, really friends. And that's your coworker, and he came into your life strictly as a coworker, and y'all developed a friendship. Come on now, everybody got a work bay, ain't that what they say anyway? Everybody go to work to a work bay. Your dude mad at you in the morning, got to send you off to another man who's your friend every day. Shit. All right, <clears throat> Mel Melissa Lawler, one says, what or who? Was your inspiration to make videos and post? Um, like I said earlier, man, Eric Thomas was was like the original, like starting point to all of this shit, man. Like I had a low point in 2012. Like I said, I was making decent money with my job, um, full benefits, had the car and all of that. And because I was estranged from family, because I, I wasn't at the time providing value to anybody else, I was missing that that emotional reward. That I had gotten in college from having my mentorship program and all of this, that, and the other. I didn't know that was it, but that's what it was. So, anywho, <clears throat> I came across his videos on YouTube. And, you know, he was just, like, really bringing that heat, man. And he was being himself in the process. He ain't dressed like everybody else. He ain't sound like everybody else. But he was, like, one, he was motivating me. And he was inspiring the masses. And he had a cool story. If you If you have a chance, go check him out. So at that point, I was like, you know, this is something that I could see myself doing. I just identify with him, identify with what he was doing. The only thing was I was a writer. I wasn't really a speaker, so I didn't jump into YouTube. I just went on Facebook and I wrote articles and I worked on my first book. But, you know, it was and it really the funny thing was it wasn't even an entrepreneurial thing. Like it wasn't even like I didn't even think of this as a, a job or a career. I was like, this is something I could do so I won't feel so empty inside and being at this low point that I'm at. Um, but it just evolved into that. The videos just came about like a year and a half ago. I, like I said, I was too nervous um, to do videos or any kind of public speaking. That's why I just recently started doing that. <clears throat> Asiwasi underscore says, how do you make a living? Uh, I get up and I grind every day. That's how. And, I'm, and I focus on me and... Uh, as far as the business part goes, and I, and I focus on the people as far as any kind of product or any service that I offer. Like, how can I provide value? So, between those two things, or three things, rather. rather. Uh, I underscore am underscore T-ham as what are your deciding factors in your journey to become a motivational speaker? It's kind of the same questions. But, yeah, I just took the limitations off myself. I was just a writer. 
you know, to be a motivational speaker, I said, you know, I got to take limitations off myself and reach more. All right, let's go to another one. Okay. I am underscore Akamal. Akamal. I don't know how to say that. But why are so many men emotionally unavailable? <laughs> I like that phrase. Because you know what? Emotionally unavailable never means physically unavailable. Motherfucker be open 24-7, 365, you know, with that dick. But when it comes to his heart, it ain't. All right, so if a dude tells you, like, he's emotionally unavailable, what he's saying is, my heart is out of your reach. So if you go forward with me, it's, it's got to be under the presumption that there's, no, there's not going to be any emotional connection. Keep your emotions out of it. You're not going for my heart, whatever, whatever. So if you're even, like, thinking about moving forward with a dude, you just know what you're getting yourself into. All right, which is, ain't, ain't shit but his bedroom. Um, and, and that's just a smooth way of saying it. I'm emotionally unavailable. They might back it up with some traumatizing experience or heartbreak they have yet to get over. But, you know, I bet if you ask him if you can suck his dick, he'll be all over it. I bet he'll be with that. I bet that'll be available. Open sign. Krispy Kreme sign is lit up. <laughs> Let's go to one or two more, man. One or two more. Not perfect. Just forgiven. Ooh, I like that. I like that name. That's now that's an Instagram name I can get with. All this other shit. I don't know what the hell y'all be on. Ask, <clears throat> how in the world do you stay so humble and grounded with all of this attention? Um the, the attention ain't shit. Like attention ain't shit. You know, what's that girl that catch catch me outside? How about that? Don't she get attention? You know what I mean? If I measure myself in terms of attention and she gets so much more, then she would be like higher than me as a person. She'd be winning that life, you know, compared to me. But attention don't make me. If, if attention did, I would do shit like, you know, post hella dick pics. I, I'd probably be already a sex tape out by now. Um, you know, I would exploit every aspect of my life. I'd be at least putting on a facade of a, of a perfect relationship and, you know, or just showing every good moment I've ever had in any relationship. Just for attention. Let me get this attention. Like, you know what it looks like when people are about attention, you know. Um, so even with the attention that comes my way, it, it don't make me. And, and honestly, if something makes you, it can break you. Um, and I'm yeah, I'm, thank you for the compliment as far as being humble and grounded. I guess everybody wouldn't say that. <laughs> I am, though. 90% of the time, you know, I am. And it's funny because I, I guess people say, you know, I don't know how to take you versus online versus in real life. Matter of fact, when I, I just came from an event at Morehouse and I get this all the time where people will DM me afterwards and be like, oh, you know, I wanted to speak, but I didn't know how you would take it or whatever. Look, y'all are the reason I'm able to do what I love to do for a living. So come up to me like, please, whatever you if you see me eating, like I will let my food go cold. If you see me in public, stop me so I can thank you for being in my corner and for your support. You know, uh, to y'all, I'm gonna always be humble and grounded. You know, only time I'm not humble and grounded, I guess, would be like if I'm playing ball. I talk a lot of shit there or in the bedroom. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bedroom bully. I talk a lot of shit there. Or if somebody's trying to, like, invalidate me or take credit for the shit I do or doubt me, you know, in those moments, I boss up. But, and we all got layers, though, right? Like, if you're a mom, you may be the sweetest woman. You may bake cookies for the whole neighborhood, make lemonade, all that shit. But if somebody messes with your baby, who do you turn into? Mama bear. Like, you don't play that shit, right? You'll turn up on a motherfucker, right? So, that's kind of like me. I appreciate the humbling ground, but I understand, like, you know, I, I do understand I got my layers. So, about 5 to 10% of the time, I ain't humble or grounded. I ain't trying to be. Um, but, yeah, if I wasn't, if I'm not humble and grounded, it ain't the attention that makes a difference. All right, cool. Let's move through these last ones really quick. Kenya's keepsake says, do you partner with others in your field if I trust them? Can't trust everybody, man. People are snakes. People are real life snakes out here. Um, what are your aspirations in life? Just to know I inspire somebody else and to do that to my maximum potential. You know, no no life left unturned, man. Like, what's your max on bench pressing? Uh, the most I've done was 495 pounds. And that was like a year and a half ago. I'm about the same size, same strength, so... Somewhere around about 500 pounds, give or take. What music artist are you currently listening to? Ask the K.L. Party Next Door and K. Dot. Kendrick Lamar. 
Oh, and Kodak. You know they don't like to see you win, and they want to see you win up in a tantrum. <laughs> oh, man. Ad Washington asks, do you think a line is crossed if your ex starts dating a former friend? An ex and a, and a former friend? Yeah, the line is crossed where you, where you started caring. Like, you made the right decision. You got them out of your life. Now they're fucking with each other. Let fuck boys and fuck girls live perfectly and happily ever after and fuck boy harmony. And fuck girl harmony. Um, Fattyback77 asks, did you have bad experiences in the past that made you want to be a philanthropist? Yeah, I guess you call them bad. I, I call them like character building. But yeah, you know, being broke, man. Like we weren't like third world country broke, but we was the kind of broke where you got to crowd around the oven to get heat and wear layers, you know, to sleep every winter. You know what I mean? Some cold ass winters and with some times where food wasn't that plentiful. But we weren't like super, super poor. But yeah, man, you know, being in a position where I couldn't help myself but needed help. And being in a position where, you know, I was doing for myself and I was trying my ass off, but it just wasn't adding up too much. My heart has always gone out to those types. I made a video a while back talking about why I don't typically give to people on the street. Like, if I just see a homeless person and they come up to me, if I feel like you're able-bodied and you're coherent enough to ask me for money, I feel like you're coherent enough to wash a car or something like that or whatever. But, you know, that's why I give to people like, you know, the city of Flint. You can't do shit about dirty-ass water. Or, you know, for kids in my hometown, like the kids. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, I'm trying to find a way now to pay all the overdue lunch balances at a local school. I can't get no email back from Atlanta's principals and shit. But, you know, my, my, my experience is like, I just look at people I can relate to. And I think we all do. We all give help to somebody who represents the help that we need at once. And that's who my heart goes out to. So, yeah, you know, that's where, you know, my philanthropy comes from. I was in those positions and, you know, and it sucks. So now that I'm in a, y'all, y'all put me in a position like y'all money flow to the communities that I go to. Just so you know, I mean, you don't see no big ass chain or watches or nothing like that. Did you play a high school sport? Asked Nelson. Yes, I played football and basketball. So that's going to wrap it up.